back to What One Thing, a smart meetings podcast that provides you with the shortcut to the top of events world by asking successful people what made the difference in their careers and lives. I'm Lauren Bright, founder and CEO of Smart Meetings, and we have a very special treat for you today. Jade Simmons spoke at our Smart Woman's Gala two years ago. It was such a highlight for me. I loved not only is she the classiest, most elegant, best dressed lady in the room, but she's <laughs> playful, she's fun, and she's engaging, and she lit our room on fire and was absolutely amazing. So I am so honored to have her here with us today. And she also has a new book out called Purpose the Remix, a mind-blowing re-understanding of purpose and how it works, which is perfect for our what one thing. Jade is a creator of life-changing transformational experiences designed to activate audiences into becoming the biggest, boldest versions of themselves. This world-class concert artist has been called a musical force of nature. She is the CEO of Jade Media Global, a content distribution company specializing in 360 degree personal development and strategic transformation. Following an artistic epiphany, Jade pivoted from playing the piano to impress audiences to utilizing music as a vehicle to provide the inspiration to activate corporate audiences. Nicknamed the classical music number one maverick, she speaks in ballrooms across the country and the world. I am so excited to have Jade Simmons here and let's get to the burning questions for her today. (laughs) So welcome Jade, great to see you. You look marvelous. Thank you. I have the privilege of getting to see you. Those who are tuning in today are going to get to hear your inspiration. And we could start off. Tell me about the moment you realized you wanted to pivot from classical music to inspirational speaking. Yeah, you know, I always say the the most powerful pivots, they're really the ones you don't know you're making. They're sort of happening very organically. And you mentioned in the beginning the fun time that I had with your audience, your attendees, and it's because I was in a room full of uh, what I consider fellow experienced creators, you know, people who know what it's like uh, to take an empty space and and change the atmosphere and, and make it an experience for the people who are going to be in that space. And what I had been doing sort of subtly over time in my classical music concerts, I'd begun talking to the audience in between the music, telling stories about the composers. Sometimes I would share things that I thought was inspirational or would make them experience the music differently. And it was those in-between moments that was they were really setting me apart from the other pianists. It changed the, the number of bookings I was getting, the, the level of bookings. And then someone uh, in one of these cases heard me speak and invited me to speak at a big corporate event. And as we say, the, the rest is, is history. And so today I have the luxury, I always say, of being able to set aside time for straight ahead concerts. But the majority of my time is spent in unexpected rooms. A piano comes with me and I combine music and inspiration to create a transformation on the spot. And boy, do you. I saw it in action. (laughs) Such a pro. I remember a few technical hiccups and you just rode right through that so elegantly. (laughs) And you engaged our audience so memorably and really got them to be part of the show, which a lot of people That's don't right. have the ability to do. So people felt so comfortable with you coming yeah. up on stage and you made them the star. Truly a great gift that you have. Thank so you. we saw you on stage at the event and then guiding them to perform. What is your signature sauce, would you say, that allows you to do that and make such a success? You know, it is this, this re-understanding of purpose. You mentioned that epiphany I had and that's what it was on stage, you know, for years as a performer, and especially the world of classical music, it's so grueling, Marin, and it's so competitive. And we all know m- most of the people that I speak to are in competitive industries. So you know what I'm talking about, where the thing you've been wanting to do all your life suddenly becomes the thing that's the most exhausting <laughs> and draining and the joy can be gone from it. And I'd started having bouts of stage fright and things that just weren't native to me as a, as a young artist. And it was the speaking that sort of gave me room to breathe and sort of regret group. And so I was using it as this, you know, technique to sort of get through the moment. And when I was paying attention, I realized, wait, the audience is getting something completely different and bigger than what I came to offer. And so the re-understanding for me was that I had thought for years that my purpose was to play the piano. And so what I tell audiences now,
now is listen, your purpose is not the thing you do. Your purpose is the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. And the freedom that comes from that, you mentioned me putting people on stage. I'm taking the spotlight off of myself and sharing it with the audience who isn't expecting to be in the spotlight, may have gotten used to being in the background. People in business know what it's like to sometimes you can lose your voice. And so this flip for me of really understanding that it wasn't just about me impressing the audiences, but creating an impact within the people in the audience, that changed everything. I started having fun again on stage. I dared to be funny. I dared to bring humor. I dared to mix genres. And I think I even did it uh, with you guys in Vegas. I dared to rap on stage. Yes, so today- you did. It was wonderful. Yes. <laughs> so today, you know, my experience is much more varied than the average classical artist to the point where I no longer say I play classical recitals. I like to say that I create concert adventures that go from Rachmaninoff to rap with inspiration inspirational storytelling in between that assures the audience does not leave the same way they came in. Oh, absolutely. I think you touch so many people. And that is, as a fellow CEO, that is Mm -hmm. so inspiring for me because I have experienced very similar feelings of, you know, losing your voice, accelerating others, feeling the pressure, you know, kind of having that anxiety that you don't know where it came from, you know, and putting other people in the spotlight that can also, Mm -hmm. you find that they're so good at carrying the load with you and it does get better. And I can totally relate. And you're so, so good at that. So what made you want to start your own company? And what did you learn from that? How did you springboard into what you're doing now? I have a feeling you are going to relate to what I'm about to say 100%, which is at some point you realize, especially when you're in an oversaturated field, there are a gazillion professional speakers. There are three gazillion professional musicians. So at some point you have to say, am I going to just stick to the template of how everyone has always done it before me? Or am I going to dare to create an entirely new space that I'm going to feel 100% comfortable in and that I can create a new space that maybe hasn't existed for others? And I see what you're doing in the event space is very similar. And this is the reason I got that nickname of classical music's number one maverick, because as I started shaking up first, the way that I was interacting with the audience, and then the, the type of music that I was performing. And then to say, you know what, this experience we're creating is an even more unifying one and even more welcoming one. Classical music has the stigma of being a little bit elitist and monolithic. And now, you know, my audiences are one of the most uh, diverse uh, classical music audiences that you'll come by. So that idea of feeling like it was time to step out, but probably the, the most real part of that answer is that I had been under management. As an artist, we look for managers and agents to do everything and you wait to be discovered. Right. And you could be right. waiting for a really long time for somebody yes. to discover you. I'm using air quotes here. And so one of my biggest pieces of advice to anyone listening is at some point you have to decide not to wait around to be discovered, but to discover yourself instead. Uh, the only problem is you're going to discover some awesome things that will often make you bigger than the space you're in. So I decided to leave managers and agents and decide to speak for myself, present for myself and sell for myself. And uh, you probably know what it's like to have people say, oh, don't do that. That's risky. Or don't charge that much. They're never going to pay that. And I remember the year that. Absolutely. We doubled my speaking fee. And one of the managers said, oh my gosh, you're going to price yourself out of the market and you're never going to you know, work again. And what, we, what I said was, listen, I've been sneaking down at these conferences and listening to the other speakers. And a lot of them are boring. And I yeah, am that's not right. boring. And I've got a I've got a whole piano. I bring yes. people on the stage, and those Absolutely. people are charging three times more than me. And so we said we're going to test the waters. And no lie, when we doubled my speaker fee, get this, it was the most bookings we had ever had. There is something that happens when you create an alignment between an understanding of your worth and the external value that you put on it. There was there was an exclu- exclusivity that was added to it, an understanding that it was was high end and of high value and nobody blinked an eye um, and, br- and and they brought us in. Yeah. We were the Calvin Klein jeans. They're all jeans, but you put a price on it and everybody I put a wants price to. On it. That's right. Because I'm very wary of people who will just say slap a premium price tag on it and call it right. high end. Right. We had done the work. We also knew that we could guarantee a certain level of transformation. We could guarantee a certain experience every single time. And once we knew that, then we could say we know 
This is the actual value because we've seen it. And we also know what else is out there and they ain't doing it. So absolutely. Um, I've seen a lot of speakers in my time. You are so unique. You are you. so stylish. Your presence inspires people in my experience. And I don't feel this very often inspires people just by being in the room with you. I felt like I wanted, first of all, I wanted to go buy that skirt you had. I've looked for that. <laughs> We're like, it's so cute. But your presence is very welcoming and inspiring to want to get people to go to a new level. Yeah. And that's yeah. rare. And I totally relate to that maverick and breaking away. Sure. As what I call sometimes the blue ocean. I've had to do it. Oh, I that's too. Good. I'm in a very competitive field. And unfortunately, a lot of people try to swim over to wherever we swim. So it's a constant that's innovation right. constantly. And we've always that's been it. the highest priced. And when my salespeople come and say, oh, but they're getting such a lower price over here. I say, well, we're, we're bringing the value. That's and right. really invested in that. And value is something that you absolutely have. And it's wonderful Thank to you. hear that you're able to, worth every penny, worth every Thank penny you. in my book. <laughs> so when, when you talk about that, what is the one thing that you really hope people will take away from your presentations? Is there something that you can encapsulate that is the message? Yeah. You know, we, we've been really carrying this, this purpose message sort of emerged Merged. It was something I used to say as sort of one statement in the midst of a presentation. Now it's become a large part of the presentation because we saw it was hitting home, this re-understanding that purpose was what was happening in others when you do what you do. And so there's a freedom uh, that comes when we tell ourselves I don't have to just do one thing. I know you probably have tons of multi-passionate, multi-talented people listening in. You do have to figure out what that through thread is, and then you offer it in everything that you do. The reason I call people on the stage near the end of my presentation is because that's the riskiest moment, right? As the performer, I should want to close the show and make sure I give you the bang, but I am literally relinquishing those last few minutes to complete strangers. And I think for leaders, it's the understanding to believe that the people we are leading, the teams that we're leading, uh, that they have been gifted to us. And if we can trust in them that there's more talent to be shared, more space to be given, more spotlight to be had, that like you said earlier, not only are they going to help us carry the wonderful load of purpose, but they're going to discover something about themselves that's just unforgettable and oh so powerful. And as a leader to have any part in sparking that in someone else, I mean, I'll tell you what, you can really be easy uh, when oh, that you happens. you had people it's so vivid in my memory. There were people sitting down playing the piano with you that probably never played the piano before. That's right. I am. That's everybody right. in the audience was moved by that because everybody could put themselves in that position. That's it. And it was so relatable. And to see those folks really shine and you gave them that space, it yeah. was, you know, that gift is rare <laughs> and so awesome to see somebody of your caliber to be able to inspire that in people. Such a Thank you. such a great gift. So in your book is a riff on 21 words on purpose. I yeah. hear it's already receiving five-star reviews and his mm -hmm. audio book is coming soon. I can't wait. Yes. I'm going to love audio books. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. Anyway, what made you decide to write this book oh and my what gosh. would you like people to take away from it? I didn't have a choice, Marin. I was saying those words. You know, your purpose is not the thing you do, it's what happens in others when you do what you do. And people were hearing, they were hearing that one statement. And then we get emails. I quit my job after I heard you say that, or I went on a missions trip or I launched a business. And I thought, okay, hold on a sec. We need to be good steward of that statement and fill it out a little bit. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that understanding of purpose. So I wrote the book partly out of necessity. I wanted people to have a guidebook, not just to figure out what purpose was, but to learn how to walk in it. I also wanted them to understand what purpose was not. It's not your passion. And it's not your job. It's not your role. It's not your title. And most of us have lived our life thinking that. But the good news is that most likely we've been operating in purpose for way longer than we knew, but now we get to do it intentionally. And so my ambitious goal is that a billion people will uncover purpose and walk in it, which instantly means that lots of other people will instantly be impacted because of the purpose that we each find in ourselves. So I'm excited for it to create a bit of a contagion uh, and a bit of a wildfire where purpose is concerned. Oh, that's so great. One does it and then it catches fire. I love that. Yeah. I'm super excited to read it and to share Thank it you. and hopefully catch some fire myself. Yes. So how can our community, the Smart Meetings and Above and Beyond, apply your one thing to yeah. their lives? 
I think the one thing, this re-understanding of purpose, in your industry, there's so much pressure, so much pressure to perform, so much emphasis on detail that a lot of times people won't remember after it's over. Meeting planning was voted one of the most stressful jobs. I'm just throwing yes. that in. The, yes. Listen, my husband's an air traffic controller, and I think you guys still still beat him uh, out. Yeah, he's, got, he's got the pressure too, right? <laughs> he's got the pressure, but I think, you know, there's a way to, to, to transform pressure into being, I call good urgency, which is remembering that you're not just planning an event or creating an experience, but that you have this wonderful possibility to reshape someone's life in the moment of that event. Just one little experience. And I've been to your events. I've been to some really great events. I've been to some not so great where you can tell they haven't thought through, you know, what the real experience is. And so I think my one thing is understanding that you're not just creating an event. You're not just being judged by the bottom line but you get to create space for other humans that if nothing else provides an escape for one hour in time, one day in time, one week in time. So please do not discount the value of the work that you're doing. Oh, that is so, you know, it's so great that you said that. I often, I've been in the meetings world for a long time, but I often liken it to being a producer of a movie. If you do it right, people escape into it. They're having an experience that's an immersion, which can be very life altering. And like when you walk out of a really good movie and it sticks with you for a long time, when I've left a really good meeting, I'm pondering, I'm remembering the speakers, it sticks with me and I'm changed as part of that. So it's great to hear you say that. And you're a great speaker and a great inspirer and somebody that I would highly recommend for any meeting. And with your new book, something that I'm sure we're all going to be super excited to find and to read on Amazon. And what else? Is there anything else that you would like to leave our audience today with with your great inspiration? Listen, I would love to just thank your audience because a large part of the reason that I come off successfully is because of the event that is being produced around me. And so we have started looking now for partners in purpose. You know, that's the luxury of when you, when you, when you get a lot of phone calls, you get to decide where you want to go. And we put a lot of emphasis on the rest of the event. How else are they setting their people up for success? So thank you to those of you who really give thought to setting up the keynote speaker, which, which really uh, shapes the way we're able to deliver. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Oh, there's going to be so many meeting and event professionals out here loving hearing what you say and loving that of course as only you classiest Jade Simmons would do is to shine the spotlight on the presenter of the event and the meeting in keeping with all of the other great things that you offer us so thank you so much for being here today on what one thing and to bringing your message and for being so inspiring for being a maverick in so many ways thank you for having me oh it's a pleasure to have you and be sure to look for Purpose the Remix of Mind-Blowing Reunderstanding of Purpose and How It Works, Jade Simmons' new book available on Amazon, coming on audio soon. And I look forward to many more experiences of sharing the room with you, Jade. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Marin. Smart Meetings, What One Thing was produced by Bright Business Media. Visit smartmeetings.com to subscribe to your daily dose of inspiration. 